Morning, everyone. Welcome back. Morning, Arthur, Chris, Paul, and Steve. Welcome, welcome to another Social Hub session. It's good to be back. Everyone that's just joined, we've got Steve, Stuart, Rob, and the Social Hub regular. Welcome, everyone. It's good to have you all back. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we've got We've got another guest with us this week. Um, for those of you that can see, we've got Matt from uh, Sight and Sound with us. I'll introduce Matt in just a second, but we'll give a few minutes, as always, to let people through the doors. Um, yeah, so thanks to everybody that, that joined our last session. Um, we had Sun we had the, the Sunu, Diego from Sunu, uh, who joined us to demonstrate the Sunu band and the Sunu app. And for anybody that missed that session, you can find it on our YouTube channel along with all of our other social hub sessions and lots of other webinars and videos and um, lots of other training and resource material. So do do check out the YouTube channel um, if you want to catch up on any missed sessions. Welcome everybody that's just joined. Um, good, as always, for anybody that is a regular, welcome back to the social hub with Sight and Sound, Technology and Seascape. For anybody that's new, Welcome to the social Hub as well. Um, this is an opportunity for you to um, obviously come and listen to our guest and to listen to um, maybe what me and Stuart have to say, um, but also to share your experiences with assistive technology as well. Um, today, we're focusing on assessments and training, um, but the floor is open. If you want to ask any questions or share your experiences on anything related to assistive technology, then please do. Good. A few parish notices before we kick off. Um, we've got some facilities to use. We've got the chat box. Um, if you're using a Windows machine, Alton H or Command and H on a Mac, that will open up your chat box. Please do put any questions, comments, observations, anything that you want to share with the group into the chat box. But just to make sure that you are posting that or you're addressing that to all panellists and attendees, not just panellists, but please include the attendees so that everybody's um, being fed the information. That's good. And if you do want to raise your little virtual hand and you want to voice your questions or you want to share anything, then Alt and Y or Command and Y um, will allow you to raise your hand and then we can get you involved. Um, good. Those are the parish notices. And so what we'll do before we kick off, I'm going to just introduce our guest. We've got Matt here from Sight and Sound, the training team. Morning, Matt. How are you? I'm all good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Where are you in the world, Matt? Uh, I'm in sunny Northampton at the moment. So uh, sitting, uh, as you, well, anyone who can see, can see some um, lovely drawings on the wall. I'm at home at the moment and uh, yeah, sunny shining. So we're all good. Good. We like to do a sort of mini weather report before we kick off. So Stuart, morning Stuart, how are you? Yeah, not bad at all, Sam. Uh, yeah. and the weather up here's not too bad. It's a bit cold, uh, but the, the sun is shining. So yay. Good, good, good. And I'm obviously based down, I'm over in Hull on the East Coast and the sun is also shining over here in Hull. So there you go. That's the 10 second weather report uh, from Sight and Sound. And um, wherever you are in the country, uh, we hope you're all safe and well. And uh, I can't believe it's almost May as well. Um, yeah, mad, absolute madness. Um, it only seems like yesterday. Um, when well, yeah, the, the social hub kicked off last year at the start of the first lockdown last March, um, but here we are. Um, good. So I think yeah, numbers have sort of stabilised. So we'll we'll dive straight in. Um, good. So welcome everybody if you've just arrived. Welcome to another social obsession, and the title of today's session, as you already know, is a treasure trove of tre of training tricks. You see, no, I can't even say it, so I, I don't even expect any of you to have, have been able to understand what I was saying. I had a moment of, of, of um, yeah, of, of genius as I was creating the title for this session, but um, we're going to be talking about all things training today because we sent a survey out um, a few months back and we got some some feedback from, from our attendees that, you know, training is an area where people would like some more information, some clarification on how accessible is training, you know, what's the process, um, is there funding, you know, access to work, 
disabled students allowance all of these things um that that you know that that questions that, that people you know want and need answering so we're going to do our best to sort of address all of those things and we're going to get matt's um take on well matt's sort of um, obviously background and work with sight and sound technology and um, with corporate clients but also within education end users you know um matt's sort of experience in the process that sight and sound um take and we're also as always joined by stuart beveridge who works for seascape up in up in fife there was a um and stuart's going to give us his experience from from the charity sector and uh he's going to talk to us about the client's journey and and from assessment initial assessment right the way through to um to the training and beyond um good good so we've got lots to get through um so Stuart, why don't we kick off and why don't we why don't we ask you to to just to give us a sort of a brief overview of how you um you know from the referral of a client through to obviously the, the training and beyond, um how does that how does that journey work? Yep, so um I'll just quickly um just give a very, very brief background to um my job role as well. So um eight years um in July of this year I will have worked with um, the Fife based charity Seascape for eight years um, as an assistive technology trainer. Um, you might know Seascape better as Fife Society for the Blind, uh, by the way, um, up here in Fife. Um, so, part of my job is to train visually impaired people who, like myself, are not sighted or who are, you know, unable to use magnification um, and therefore need to depend on, you know, like audio feedback or, or braille or need to use uh, voice control or, or, or dictation. So I work with a, a lot of mainstream everyday technology, such as iPhones, you know, smart speakers, etc. But I also work with specialist assistive technology as well, such as screen reading software, uh, JAWS, <clears throat> uh, in particular, specialist mobile phones, such as Synaptic, uh, scan and read devices, navigation devices, braille displays and note takers, it, it just goes on and on. So I'll just quickly give that introduction because it ties into what I want to do now and just give a quick overview of the, the kind of training process um, I go through with each client. So the, the, the client's journey from almost start to finish, if you like, and I've just kept it very general. So um. The process usually starts with a client being referred to me because they, they need some assistance with technology. They're, they're struggling to do something that technology might be able to help them with, or it might even be that they actually have a piece of technology. I've saw this many times where um, somebody's maybe bought you know, an iPad, for example, and they've just got no idea how to even get started with it. And the referrals come from people in um, the organisation, my organisation, Seascape, uh, such as the site support team. They're the people who are, I think many people on here will maybe refer to them as rehab workers, you know, so they go out, our site support team, and um, assess people in their own homes for, you know, a range of different things, such as mobility, cooking, um, safety concerns, etc. Et so... If they see that technology can help or if a client is struggling with technology, then the site support team will come to me with a, a referral through our online database. And that, that's the main area I get referrals from. Uh, but I can also take referrals from our uh, optician. We have a, a, a very own optician in Seascape. Uh, they might also come from um, external organisations or um, charities uh, such as the, the NHS up in Fife or uh, Sight Scotland Veterans, they used to be Scottish War Blinded, that's another charity, Guide Dogs or, on occasion, um, and of course other companies such as our very own Sight and Sound might even ask me to do a bit of JAWS training um, on occasion. Um, even places like Social Work, the odd referral, or Education um, through um, Kids in School or in college. So loads of different referral um, portals, if you like. <clears throat> so when the referral comes to me, it gives just a very, very brief description of um, you know, where the client is struggling. And I asked for this just so that I have an idea 
of what to expect when I actually contact um, the client. So I can already start to kind of, of narrow it down. Um, and then contacting the client, that's actually the next stage. I contact the client usually by phone and I really do ask for uh, quite a bit more information. So during that initial phone call, I again ask the client, okay, what are you struggling with? You know, questions like, what are you struggling with? Um, what do you actually want to achieve from, you know, areas of, of technology? And, and a lot of that at the moment is either, um, for example, um, I need to be able to use my phone a bit better, or I'm really a, a big one, and Sam knows this well, as I'm really struggling to, to read the newspaper, something like that. And I also, as well, um, for me, I ask the client how, how good their, their vision is, what their level of sight is. And I hope that doesn't sound too intrusive, but I need to know because I cannot deal with magnification. As I say, I have no sight at all. So there's no point in the client coming to me if they still have, or if they feel they still have some useful vision. So, you know, then I might have to refer a client on um, to somebody else within our organization who can do magnification, or again, to an external company like um, Sight and Sound. Um, but if they come to me, you know, if, if they need anything screen reader wise or, or anything like that, then what would happen is I would have already narrowed it down um, some technology because of what they've told me they're struggling with and what they want to achieve. And then I make an appointment for the client to visit um, our center um, to get hands on demonstrations of different equipment or solutions available. And I actually let the client have a go at using uh, the different, you know, technologies I, I have laid out as well. And that really does help the client get a feel for it. And then, you know, the, the thing that I, I always do is I don't recommend anything to the client during that assessment. Um, I always let them come to their own decisions about um, what they, they want based on the technology I've shown them. And then, as I say, it's up to the client to decide what they think is best for them. And they will then um, maybe go away and decide to either purchase the, the equipment themselves, um, or they might actually go back to our site support team because a lot of clients at the moment, um, additional funding is required for the equipment. You know, they, they just don't have the resources themselves at the moment. So that, that's another huge process that our site support team uh, might have to go through. And then the final stage is if they have purchased the equipment, then we look at um, do they need any further training or I look at do they need any further training. Um, and depending on what they say, I can then organize, you know, some different face-to-face um, -face training appointments, um, especially in, in the initial stage when they've just purchased the equipment, I'll do it face-to-face. Um, but then again, what I can do also is do stuff over the phone and by email, and we've even done stuff um, over Zoom, depending on how um, confident the client feels. Um, and then the final stage is just to review that the client is happy, and then I just close their particular case down on the database. But they know they can always come back to me in the future if they, they need anything else. So that's it. That, that's just a really brief... Um, overview of the, the client journey, if you like, and the, the assessment. Um, was that okay, Sam? Do you have any questions? Yeah, that's, or? that's great, Stuart. No, I think it's, it's great. That's, it's a real clear picture of, 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 you know, how from a charity's point of view, you know, that that, that initial journey starts all the way through. Um, obviously, from, from your point of view, Stuart, you're delivering very, um, well, sort of specialist training in a way, obviously specialist software being either screen reading mm. yeah. software or braille braille technology obviously those yeah. are your areas of expertise the vi side of things so the low vision training obviously that is um delivered by one of your colleagues lindsay would it be yeah yeah, yeah. so that is that is obviously a service you can offer um yep. but obviously um the, the sort of vi devices tend to be less almost less sophisticated let's say than a braille display don't they um yeah, and my pieces but, of work tend to be a lot longer, um, you know, because yeah. it is a bit more um, specialist. You know, Lindsay, or maybe because it's it's something like a magnifier or Zoom text, she mm. might only see clients maybe 
once or twice, whereas I might see a client a good five, six sessions, you know, so. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I suppose from our point of view, you know, um, obviously Matt, Matt's going to dig into the, the mm-hmm. predominantly the software training um, as well. But, you know, in terms of some of our devices, like I know um, in one of our previous um Previous social obsessions, we demonstrated the Envision glasses, a pair of smart glasses, didn't we, Stuart? And mm-hmm. there are there are other wearable devices that 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 would support somebody with either low vision or no vision at all. But um, those devices are still covered, you know, with with training. I think it's it's important, isn't it, to remember that 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 you know, not just your your software or your braille displays, for instance, will require training. You know, there are other low vision devices that that. You know, it's important that you've got the support there, especially with Envision as well. Envision and Orcam, uh, these oh, yes. wear these wearable devices that, for somebody that's brand new, um, to to that sort of device, it's very important that the support's there. Um, no, but that's 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 great, Stuart. Um, we've got a couple of questions just just off the bat uh, from Joe, who hi, morning, Joe. Welcome back. Um, so Joe's asked already. She's asked, "Is there a cost for Stuart's tech support?" So <laughs> we felt like this might come up, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it didn't take long. <laughs> uh, it didn't. So yeah, let's yeah. let's uh, answer it now then. So, if any client um, is in the Fife area, everything is free, and that's everything from the introductory session, the, the assessment. Um, you know, supposing it takes a client, and all clients are different. So some clients may only take three or four sessions doesn't cost them a thing. Some clients might take 10 or 12 sessions, you know, it it just all depends. Again, doesn't cost them a thing. Um, But if it was anything outside Fife, then our organisation would charge, you know, whether that's for a company wanting training or, you know, a a client outside Fife. I can sometimes, I've done, sometimes went outside Fife and trained uh, clients in Jaws um, in Edinburgh. Um, there's going to be a bit of a uh, cost involved there because it's my time that could be spent, you know, dealing with people in Fife. So that they're quite right. You know, they're charging for my time, basically. And that's up to management to decide the costs that I don't. Um, I'm, I'm not paid enough for that. Um, and again, if it was a, a company in Fife, um, you know, then again, um, they would take um, a, a small fee. But for any client in Fife who's registered on our system, um, it's completely free. Yeah, great. And obviously, we're going to touch on sort of funding and 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 different funding options as we as we go through the session. Um, Joe's also asked what area you cover. Obviously, Stuart's based in up in Fife and covers obviously working for Seascape up there. You cover the Fife area, don't you? Um, yeah. Obviously, you know this model that you've sort of described to us, Stuart, um, would you say that would be mirrored by most charities across the country? Obviously, not all charities are lucky enough to have somebody as sort of knowledgeable as... Oh, uh, thanks, with... Sam. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's true, though, isn't it? I mean, obviously, that you know, I work with a lot of charities um, and obviously Matt will have as well. And, and uh, you know, not, ev- not every charity has a, a designated um, assistive tech trainer, let's say. Um, however, um, there is obviously knowledge within the, within the charities. Um and then if, if the charities obviously aren't able to deliver that support, then they would come to somebody like Sight and Sound, for instance. Um, but yes, and Stuart, did you cover um, sort of how you deliver the training? Because Joe has asked, obviously, is it, is it delivered by phone or obviously remotely? I, I, did, I did quickly discuss it then. So <clears throat> my preferred option is face-to-face um, because, you know, I, I need to, to see what the client, you know, try and get a feel for what the clients are doing. And they, they usually like me to, to be sitting beside them, um, you know, to, to tell them what, what's what. Um, but thankfully, because my training, everything is audio based, um, you know, I need speech to audio feedback. I can do it over the phone. So if they've got a bit of technology in their house um, that they've maybe made a mistake on or they're, they're just stuck on a, a, a wee thing or two, they can just phone me up and I can just hear everything that the tech's doing and they're doing and describe it over the phone step by step. Um, we can also, I can also do it by email, depending on the, the complexity, obviously, of, of the, the, the situation, but I can send step by step instructions by email. Um, and of course, we also have Zoom. We, we, we have, I have done a couple of things um, over Zoom as well. So the, Zoom. there are a few options. I've never, never heard of it. 
Stuart. Zoom, yeah, what's that? <laughs> what are we on at the moment? Microsoft Teams? No, no. No idea. <laughs> I feel like I've lived on Zoom uh, for the, oh, last, no. the last year. Um, yeah, but no, you're right. Very fortunate, aren't we, now that, that we've got yeah. more options to, to yeah, reach our service users. No, that's good. Um, excellent. Now, so obviously that's great. We've sort of got a, we've got a bit of background about how we're coming, we're, you know, uh, facing training and assessments from a charity's point of view. But now, before, I know, Stuart, you're, you're going to give us a little bit of an overview of, of how you would um, take a client through an initial jaw session, aren't you? But before we do that, why don't we just cross over to Matt? Um, and firstly, it'd be great to obviously um, get get a bit more of a background, Matt, about about your work. Matt is, let's say, the the head of the training team um, at Sight and Sound Technology. Is that right, Matt? Yeah. I've got a few names, I think. Um, yeah. Not Go all on then. Possible. Uh, What's but... on your office door? <laughs> I don't have one now. That's it. Um, <laughs> But um, no, I want to say, uh, so I, I've been, yeah, just to give you a little bit of background, I've been with Sight and Sound for, I think, about 19 years now. Um, and that time has flown, mainly because uh, most of that time I have been travelling the country. Um, so Sight and Sound's training side of things, you know, we cover the length and breadth of the country. Um, we do do, you know, we are in a lot of different fields. So from an individual perspective um, to education, DSA, uh, access to work, corporate. So there's a hell of a lot of settings that we're involved in. Um, and over that, over that period of time, it is, it is just gone incredibly quick because we are seeing different people most days. Um, we are getting up at silly o'clock, coming home at silly o'clock um, and, 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 and trying to help people. Um, obviously, the last year has been a bit different. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I, th- I think it's been good different because it's actually proved to a lot of people that you don't have to travel all of that way um, to, to be able to do a good job. Um, you know, we have been very fortunate with the clients that we're working with. Um, we, we've been doing a lot of Teams training. We've been doing a lot of Zoom training. We're even using stuff like uh, Microsoft Quick Assist uh, now as well, depending on, on, on what the client has got. So we might have to speak to them on the phone, but we, we can see and take over on their machines. Um, to let you, everyone know, I'm slightly different from Stuart. I'm 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 fully sighted. I'm a fully sighted trainer, um, so um, so you know that remote stuff. And if we don't always get the feedback uh, from um, uh, the, the Zoom session or the team session, it doesn't bother me as much because I can more or less work out where we're going and, and see where we're going. So, and and again, I've got that um, that, that knowledge with Jaws where I know more or less what Jaws is going to say when he when he when he drops onto something. Mm. um so yeah so you know very very similar that 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 journey for the client is very similar to what um to to what Stuart has already uh noted and and I won't go over it all again but Mm. I think the 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 difference between us and them is that you know they may see people from right from that start where they don't know what software that they want whereas a lot of people when they come to us they might have seen you Sam uh, Mm -hmm. at a show they might be talking about the software that way and you get involved that way and then I come in at a later date or or, or one of the team does um or we just get you know uh, orders through email um you mm-hmm. know so a lot of uh, corporate clients already know us one the access to work database there of uh, of training providers um so actually we a lot of the time it's it's not unheard of for us to just get a piece of paper with details of somebody um and they want some training so then it, it's logging them onto the system getting in touch with them and again exactly what Stuart has sort of outlined uh trying to find a little bit about them see where they want to go with the training um you, you know we, we might already have a brief from them as it comes through um you know we want to use jaws with x y or z and um, and then it's just trying to find out if that user has any prior knowledge of jaws what their skills are like and um, because then we can sort of you know we, we're very user centric so we actually go where the user wants us to go and even in the session um you will find a lot of the time um you start off in one area all of a sudden you open a dialogue box and then you've got to explain that area to then come out of it uh, so we go off on tangents but we always pull it back to the core of um, of what we need to do um so yeah so you know all in all pretty pretty similar to, to Stuart's experience and, and customer experience but sometimes we see people at a slightly later stage. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we yeah. have to try and backtrack and find out a little bit about them that way. 
I suppose from our from certain sounds point of view, like you've touched on um, there, Matt. Obviously, somebody like myself potentially m- maybe the first point of call, wouldn't they, for the for the client? Um, you know, I would I would go out and visit somebody, deliver that initial assessment. Um, you know, offer my advice, my suggestions, demonstrate the technology initially. Um, poten- potentially, it could be software or hardware, whatever it might be. And obviously, further down the line, if that person feels that's going to support support them in some way, obviously they would purchase that. Access to work may purchase that, or if it's a student, it may be through the disabled students allowance. Mm-hmm. And then obviously the training would come at a later stage. Um, and Matt, you also touched on um, obviously the ways in which you've been delivering training since COVID struck, and you mentioned Quick Assist. So just for anybody that's listening, that's not. Uh, uh, aware of quick assist obviously as somebody that's cited as well that you you're able to access somebody's computer remotely aren't you and you Absolutely. can actually control the yeah, computer yeah, yeah. In, in, a, in a former life um i i also uh, managed the support team as well so again we've got um five guys or so on on support um and they will help with any jaws related technical issues but they can take over that way uh, our own internal systems will allow us to take over as well but yeah i say from a training perspective the the three main ones that i've been using over this last year are, are really yeah i would say teams first because i've been doing a lot of corporate um training uh, then i would probably drop on to quick assist uh, and then the last one really for me would be would be zoom um, but again, it doesn't matter for us which one we use. It's all about making sure that the client is happy with what they've got. Uh, you know, some e- even some um, corporates don't even have any of those and they have their own. Uh, so, you know, something like WebEx or something like that. So, uh, mm. again, we've had to use that. Um, but yeah, I'm saying from the from the quick assist point of view, you know, the, the reason why we find that really handy is because it's already on your machine. Um, we don't have to install anything. You know, you just can go into the uh, the start menu, type in the word quick and JAWS will tell you quick assist app. You press enter at that point. You're in an edit box. I will give you a number. You press it, you type it in, press enter. And, and then um, I would then ask for full control and it comes back again. You find the OK or the allow button and press enter on that. And, and away you go and it works really really well um you know i've had no issues with it the only thing as we said we, we don't get is we, uh, we we can't talk to you via that method i can hear jaws i can hear any other uh, you know any of the other software that you've got running um but from a from a speech perspective for, for us two uh you know you might just have to have a mobile phone in your other ear or something like that mm. um, but again it's a very cheap easy way of um, of doing it yeah no that's that's no it's really useful to know because i think you know like you said it's already built in but a lot of people probably wouldn't be aware of it would they that, that, that don't know i want to say yeah. half the stuff that's on microsoft you don't really know and again they get you know yeah. things are getting better all the time um you know even uh you know teams for example that is changing dramatically there's this lovely fight going on between teams and zoom at the moment yeah um, you know, one will bring something out and then all of a sudden the, the other one will bring it out. And yeah. what that actually then does is it, it changes or can change the landscape of that application because they've had to add a button in or, or do something. And, and again, that can be quite confusing. Um, you know, when Teams first came out, there wasn't a, uh, a, a an end call keystroke. Um, so it took them a while to build that in. Um, but again, we can feed stuff back. You know, we do have um, a little bit of an ear over in Dublin uh, where they develop teams. So um, we mm-hmm. have fed back stuff to them uh, and, and they've got it put in in the uh, later versions. Um, yeah. yeah, again, the quick assist already built in. I know the support team use it and like using it because, you know, it's quick, it's easy um, and, it, and it doesn't take too much to, uh, to get on and see what's going on. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Matt. And yeah, so uh, top tip there for you, anybody. Quick assist. If you do need technical support, you know, from from our side of things, you know, we can very quickly access your computer remotely and diagnose a problem or you know um, solve a problem for you. Um, yeah, and I'm sure we're obviously not the only company that uses things like Quick Assist. So it's it's out there. It's available. Um, one question I've got for you, Matt, and I'm always quite interested in this because <clears throat> I always use my mum as an example. Right? So my mum is sighted, first of all, but is it's, when it comes to technology, I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say she's the most confident. Let's say. Yeah. So I always find it quite interesting, and obviously Stuart, um, this is I suppose to you as well. But 
as, from a trainer's point of view, going to see somebody that, first of all, is visually impaired or blind, um, but somebody that's visually impaired or blind that, that perhaps also isn't as confident in technology, what is that sort of initial, you know, do, would you say that a big part of your role is, you know, instilling sort of confidence and knowledge into that individual um as well as um obviously you know all the technical sort of um sophisticated you know yeah. understanding of what the software can do etc you know i suppose like somebody learning how to sing that would be tone deaf let's say yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean like transforming that person from somebody that that is tone deaf into you know pavarotti mm -hmm. do you know what, do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. how 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 do, how do you sort of navigate through through that journey yeah i want to say you know we're, we're enabling um and yeah. again i think you've got to have empathy in what what you know somebody is trying to achieve or, or how they do things um but yeah i said i can give you hundreds of examples where we've gone in and we've been i, I know one lady that we were the third set of training providers to go into this particular lady and her confidence was massively shot yeah she didn't want anyone else to go in there, but she needed to, to understand this stuff for work, basically. Um, so, you know, I'd already had a little bit of information passed to me, you know, uh, for, from her manager. And again, um, you know, I, I don't think it really matters from our point of view, whether it's face to face or online. Um, but um, you go in there first and, 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 you know, you have a chat. You have a coffee, you have a chat, you, you, you get you get used to that person. And, and it's only through talking to somebody that, um, you know, I then found out that these particular trainers, they didn't, you know, they were different providers. They didn't really know what they were doing, but they kept sending other people out and they were trying to read lists of Jaws keystrokes from a book. You know, you can't do that. You've got to get into it to start with to, to understand what's going on. So, yeah, so a lot of it is building up that confidence, making people aware that they you know they can achieve stuff you know i've i've trained many people that have gosh the jobs that they have got unbelievable you know mm -hmm. barristers solicitors ceos of companies whatever you want to be you can be it and you know this is you know ev everything is there to help you or enable you to get where you want to go mm -hmm. and so so yeah building that confidence is is a massive thing that we do as well and and it's the way that we come across you know i try and i'm a little cheeky chappy unfortunately um, and again i think humor trying to bring humor you know some people don't like computers some people it's a, a means to an end for them um and they find it quite dull uh you know but we, we try and bring that humor into it um you get to know somebody you know you do a little bit you have a little chat you go again do a bit more when you, you're building that all or all, all, all with um you know all, all that all around sort of um, knowledge that they want so not only you, you you've got the that confidence that they build up then they learn the keystrokes on top and then it goes from there and it sort of spirals yeah yeah no that's i always find it fascinating sort of you know that 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 you know um, from a training side of things and, how... and I think i think the other thing as well sam is you've you've, you've got to click with that person as well um, yeah. you know, I've got to go in and, and, and make it, a, you know, try and get into that person's head a little bit. Um, you know, we might only have one three hour session because that's all they're paid for. Um, you know, sometimes in the, uh, in the student industry, they have one or one or two hour sessions, which you've really got to get in. You've got to be snapper. You've got to go. Um, so it, it's understanding that person. It, it's trying to build that build that bond with somebody and you know I, i've still got people now you know from all those years ago that will only have me now do their training um basically because they know what i'm going to do uh or, or how i work i know how they how they work and we've done a lot of work on their confidence as well yeah and what oh, i think i'm hoping my um internet connection has not dropped out Oh, you're I, fine, Sam. Are you picking me up still, Matt? Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, okay. Moving, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was just sort of blur, blurring for a second. And um, so, and Stuart, from, from your point of view, sort of, you know, what's your approach there? You know, obviously... um, similar to, kind of to, to Matt. Um, sorry, are you hearing me, Sam? Yeah? Am I coming through? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I think my internet just dropped out for a second, but yeah, I can hear you. Oh, right. Your okay. video is gone, Sam, at the moment. So. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep talking for the moment and see what happens. Um, but yeah, similar to Matt, and again, I'm like you, Matt, that the, the, the training side, once people are actually trained, you know, I've trained them, they, they, they won't go, you know, anywhere else kind of thing, which is um, a, a good thing. Um, and when I see a client for the first time, you know, whether it's JAWS or um, say they're, they're wanting training on a, an iPad or something like that, um, again, similar to Matt, and what I try and do is uh, it's, I make it as easy as possible and we, we, we get the basics done first, um, as we'll come on to when I, I do a, a quick um, overview of my uh, introductory tour of, of JAWS later on, but make it as easy as possible um, because there's no point in running before you can walk. And, you know, if you don't have the basics of something right, then what's the point of going on to some, you know, see it's, it's JAWS. What's the point of going on to Microsoft Word? What is the point of going on to the internet or Excel or email if you don't understand the basics of how JAWS actually works? And it's the same with, you know, an iPad. What's the point of doing all that if you don't know even how to navigate around a touch screen? you know, mm -hmm. successfully. And so it's like, you know, the way I, I, I almost put it is it's like um, if you didn't have, found, if you didn't build the foundations, um, you know, to, to, to stand the house on, the house would just collapse, wouldn't it? So that, that's where I always work from. Um, and then it's a case of finding out that once they've got the basics worked out, um, by the way, I should say, after each session, I always send backup material of what we've covered to a client if they have the, the means to access it via email. Um, I always send a backup of what we've covered because I can't be available 24-7 to, you know, answer their, their questions. And it just, it really helps jog their memory. I know clients really love that way of working, the backup material um, that we have. And, um, and then after that, it's, say they want to work with something like Microsoft Word. I will teach them what they want, especially on the student side. I'll teach them what I'm being asked to teach them and nothing more because it's so much to learn on top of everything. They're, they're trying to do their own studies at the same time. Yeah. So Excel, something like that, I'll teach them what they need to know and nothing else. And again, that approach works, works really well uh, at the same time. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you, you've got, there's so many different facets, isn't there, to every application as well. Um, you know, I don't know everything um, and and I would never proclaim to know everything, I don't think either. Um, but um, but if we don't know it, we find out. Um, you know, we, we I'm sure Stuart's the same as me. We potter yeah. about, we play with it and we and we work it out for people. Um, back in the early days, I, I, I even remember looking at a YouTube clip um, on pivot tables and then teaching somebody how to do it with JAWS because they needed to do that for their job. So, you know, we, we use all the resources that we have to then put it over to, to our clients. Um, and, and again, we all work hand in hand. And again, if they can articulate what they need, then, then that's perfect. Um, just going to dive in there. I'm not sure if Sam's still there. His, his video is definitely frozen on my side. Um, can you hear me, gents? I yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Oh, you can. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Just as Paul's put in the chat box, he said, can a poor broadband connection hinder some of your work? Absolutely. Um, I've, I've yeah, got a, yes, I've got a yes, Paul. I've got a picture of Sam on my screen. So, yeah, it does hinder I, everything. I apologise for anybody that can see my frozen photo um, or frozen video image. But I, I'm still getting audio, so we're okay. We'll carry on for now. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to say it does, I'm going to say poor, poor internet. I'm going to say I've, you know, throughout the last year, I think I've had to cancel two or three sessions or should I say slide two or three sessions to another date uh, because of uh, because of poor poor internet connection. Um We've we've actually been doing um, well. Normally, if we're on site, we can probably only do one session a day. But we've been doing sort of like two sessions back to back per day at the moment. And again, you know, having three three poor internet connections, I think, is a really good return. Um, you know, so that's that, that's a very you know, really good positive. Uh, right, Sam's gone. Has he? Um, how's yeah. about from your side, Stuart? Uh, Stuart, how is the? You know, I'm presuming you do a lot of. Uh, are you doing a lot of stuff from home at the moment? Yes, everything, and you know, even when I go back to my work, hopefully in July, um, it's only going to be two days a week for you know, well and truly into the the foreseeable. If hopefully we get there, so 
it's still very much based from home. Um, I, I do have fibre, and that does seem to have... Um, I, I can honestly say my internet connection's always been good, but um, other people's, you know, the, the break up and the, um, you know, especially on the education side, um, I don't know if the internet quality sometimes is that great. Um, and the, the break up, and we just can't do anything because, you know, it, it's holding everything back because of the poor internet connection and we just need to, to reschedule for... Yeah another time unfortunately it's then it's very internet dependent isn't it uh yeah i want to say you know this this uh new modern world is that we live in now i think um you know i'm i i'm i'm one of those that doesn't have great internet at home but um luckily the wife is uh at work today so she's not uh she's not taking up half of the, half of the yeah. um you know so i'm able to turn my video on today but you know it is one of those things that you know that's you know that human contact is sometimes the thing you you lose out on when you do an online session and um, so i do like you know if they if they can see for example i do like to turn my video on at least say hello how you doing you know, get to know them a bit that way then when they're sharing their screen i might then turn my video off um, you, you know, just just so that I can save a bit of a uh, bit of power this end. Um, hello. Um, so so yeah. So it is. Um, it, you know, it's been working well. Should I say? You know, um, adding up all of the sessions we've done, only to have three cancellations or, or, or having to slide three sessions, I think is really really good. Really good return. Definitely, and I think Sam's back with us <laughs> as well. So sorry, everyone. That that's so frustrating. And all the the months we've been doing these social obsessions I've, I've never had one session where i've had to drop out um anyway it happens um thank you gents for uh <laughs> covering um good good what did i miss what did we get up to i missed some sort of gold no, so oh okay good um it's funny as well because in hull um it's like the broadband is a nightmare because there's only one provider that you can use you're like it's called oh, kcom no. you can't use sort of bt or sky or virgin or whatever you have to use this one internet provider um so if your bandwidth is rubbish you've got you know nothing you can do um except move house so anyway um so i'm gonna have to move now we're up for sale next week um good so um yeah we've covered what, what i wanted to dig into next matt and stuart before we go on to stuart's um brief demo is i wanted to talk about access to work um i don't know if you moved on to that whilst i was away but no no um, because i'm i'm interested to know much more about the whole access to work world um as a as a trainer obviously a lot of your training will be funded by access to work and with the charity i know that you come into contact with access to work as well um i actually attended an event last year where there was a um, one of the speakers was a, was a was a barrister, and he was one of the first. In fact, sorry, he was the first Asian blind barrister in the UK. Um, and his name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Um, but um, he spoke very highly of access to work and the scheme and the system and how it supported him from a student, obviously graduating, you know, right the way through his sort of legal career, you know, you know his bar exams etc moving on to becoming this successful top of his game industry professional and access to work supported him well dsa i imagine initially but then access to work all the way through his professional career so there's lots of good to be said about access to work and um you know i'd just be interested matt to sort of know obviously your interaction with this the system how that process works from an employee's point of view so mm -hmm. I've just got a new job, but I need some software, some technology to support me with my role. Um, where, yeah. where, yeah. And, and I think that's the, that's the thing that some some companies are not aware of. Um, so the you know I, I've had uh, some clients that have found it difficult to get employment because some of the um, employers that they were they were trying to go for the, or the companies they were going to go for they didn't realise these schemes were available. Uh, the, the schemes themselves are brilliant. Uh, I, I, I find, you know, they, um, they, again, they enable that company to take you on. Access to work will take the burden of having to buy equipment, you know, brow displays, uh, you know, some of the, uh, some of the actual software, um, even down to uh, a lot of the training uh, is funded fully or part funded. Um, and again, I might see things at a slightly different stage than Stuart. 
Um, obviously, because uh, within Sight and Sound, we have an internal sales team uh, that deal a lot with those access to work people. And then I would see the job as it's on the system. Um, but again, I see the end user. So I, I'm the customer facing part. Uh, and if anything has gone wrong in that in, in that system as it's got towards me, uh, then it's normally me that gets it in the neck a little bit. Um, yeah, and things do go wrong. You know, wrong equipment is um, is, is is provided, you know, or or. or or recommended, I should say, because um, a lot of the time we have to work to that brief that the assessor has put down uh, on, on, on the page. Um, you know, so I have gone to jobs where it's worked like clockwork. Uh, I've gone to other jobs where, you, you know, that they've not got the right stuff there. Um, so I've had to help that user then say, right, get back in touch with the assessor. You don't really need that, but you need this. Um, you know, so we're trying to work with them to, to do it. So, again, we're not there just from a training perspective. Uh, we're, we're there to sort of help. And again, you know, I've had other clients that have that have actually gone. I don't want to see an assessor. I want you to have a look, Matt. Tell me what I really need. And then I'll go to access to work with a shopping list and just say, this is what I really need. Um, so th there's many ways you can do it. Um, you know, again, I think it's just phoning through the local job center, uh, the job center, I think, um, you know, as I said, I don't get involved in that stage. Um, but then from there, um, you know, once it goes through and you have your uh, have your assessment, somebody will either come out or do it over the phone. Um, they should go through everything that you need to, to, to achieve your goal. And um, so from, you know, even from, uh, you know, taxes to get to and from work. Um, you know, sometimes they're fully funded or part funded, uh, depending on the size of your business uh, that you're going into. Uh, and then that enables you to get there as well, you see. So it's that whole holistic look of what do I need to go to work? What do I need from, you know, that travel perspective when I'm there, kit, equipment, and then the training. Um, so, yeah, it's a really, really good scheme. Um, um, we are you know we, we, we're finding that there's lots of different you know people doing it uh, some people not as experienced as others as others in the vi market but that's where then sight and sound bridges the gap because if they come on to us as, as an assessor we've always got that sales support there or they put you know I, i've spoken to many assessors over the years um you know and they've said i'm thinking of doing this would that be the right sort of thing to use uh, and it's working with them and building up a, a relationship with them as well um, before it even gets to that end user so yeah so you know you we, we can be involved from the sales team quite an early process and then the training team gets there a little at a bit of a later date and, and Stuart obviously you know as somebody with no vision you, you will have come into contact with access to work for for many years is that right yes um I, i've yeah. actually just had um a, an assessment from access to work um and everything's been confirmed because i really needed a an upgrade of jaws um because jaws 2019 is just not working with the you know the, the our database anymore or and you know like the, the chromium browser has updated so much and and zoom zoom it's just hanging on to no more so um, you know, I went, but I, I like Matt, you know, as, as Matt correctly says, I went in knowing what I needed um, and access to work straight away that the process was so much more simpler because I knew exactly what I needed um, in order to just do my, you know, keep doing the, the job um, that I'm doing. Um, so everything's done, everything's in place and, um, you know, I had a, a really good chat with them and um, I'm just waiting now on um, the, the letter, uh, there's a, a letter that you have to sign um, and send back to access to work, you know, just, just confirming that you're happy with the recommendations and then the work will just go ahead and buy the equipment and, and, be fun and send the, the receipts back to access to work to cover the costs. Yeah, that's it. And I've just seen, sorry to jump in there, um, Sam. Uh, I know you're driving this. No, uh, go for it, go for it. But, um, but I'm say, I've just seen uh, Carol say about, um, you know, what if is, is it different for people who are self-employed? Well, no, um, anyone can, um, can have that assessment. What I'll do is I'll just drop a link uh, into, uh, into the chat, actually, and it's the access to work eligibility. Um, oh, great. So, um, so basically that that's just you know 
if you go down there, it's just telling you who is eligible. Um, so it's saying, you know, a paid job could include self-employment, an apprentice, a work trial or experience, an internship. So they really cover quite a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, that's a government uh, website that I've just popped up there for you. Um, and hopefully that'll help you out. Thank you, Matt. That's really helpful. Um, yeah, so to be clear, it's, yeah, whether you're employed, self-employed, um, the criteria is basically you're a resident of the UK and that you have a disability um, or mental health condition and that you're over, over 16. Um, but yeah, thanks. That's really, really useful. Um, good. Now, I'm just conscious of time. So, Stuart, um, would you be happy to give us sort of a quick sort of overview of your how you would take a client through uh, the initial stages of a JAWS uh, training session. Yes, um, I'll keep it um, very brief as well, because I imagine that there may, maybe is some other questions. So I'm just going to try and share my screen. Oh, yes. You might, I might need to go. Oh, no, you've got permission. Go for it. Uh, let me just make sure I'm doing this. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, you have started screen share. Start video left parable plus the right parent button to activate press space bar period. Is that coming through, Perfect. Sam? Yes, we've got you. Wonderful. Let me just come away from Zoom then. Zoom, so most attended. Yeah. Jaws professional. Jaws okay, profe so we'll just sit there for the moment. Are you still seeing everything? Okay, guys, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's see, um, just for this example, I I'm coming at this from someone who has no idea of how, you know, Jaws works at all. And this is, um, I've had to do this with one gentleman in particular. So... As I said earlier, uh, there's no way I'm starting teaching them how to use Microsoft Word, you know, internet, etc. What I try and do is give him a solid foundation to work on so he knows how JAWS actually works um, because then he can actually have a, a good basis for navigating, um, you know, through these different applications such as Word in the future. And, you know, one of the things I start with is making sure that a JAWS hotkey is set up. So... For that, what I mean is that the client is actually able to successfully unload and restart JAWS. And the reason I do this is because it does happen, Matt, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of this as well. It's happened to me. Um, all of a sudden, JAWS stops talking to you. Yeah. And if you have no sight at all, like myself, and, you know, again, you're absolutely stuck because you don't know what's going on unless you turn on another screen reader, such as narrator, and that's not really helpful if you want to use JAWS in the long run. Yeah. So what I do is I make sure that um, a hotkey is set up so that the client is able to unload and restart JAWS himself. So I can show you that now because the, the keystroke, um, without going into it too much, the keystroke to unload JAWS is insert plus F4. So if for any reason JAWS has stopped talking, you just press insert F4. Unloading JAWS, quit JAWS dialog. Are you sure you want to quit JAWS question? Press enter to quit now, comma, or escape to cancel period. OK button to activate press space bar period. So, I mean, JAWS is working for me, but, you know, if that, well, if JAWS wasn't working, it, the person would just have to press insert F4 and then confirm it with enter. Enter, zoom. And what hopefully would then happen is, you know, JAWS has, JAWS has gone. Um, from the screen, and then to quickly get it back, I make sure that the heat, the, the hot key that is set up in the pro properties menu is Control Alt J. So if you now, if you now press Control Alt J any time that JAWS has been disabled, I'm hoping and praying that it's going to restart again. Let's just find out. Let's take our life in our hands. Uh oh. JAWS professional, oh, yeah, there we go. Video left plus the and JAWS is up and running again. And that honestly works. That is a, a really, you know, feel safe way of, of getting out of trouble if you have JAWS without getting sighted assistance or calling Be My Eyes or Ira, etc. So then you know as well, Stuart, just on the later versions of JAWS, if if it does unexpectedly crash. And things do happen, and I say, and, and this is, you know, you're, you're dead right in what you're doing there to try and um, to, to get somebody out of a hole. Um, in the later versions of JAWS, it should restart itself as well. Um, there, there is a thing there that if it sees this 
this um, dropout. Um, there, there is a command inside JAWS that's built in that says, if it does crash for any reason, try and restart yourself. So, you know, give it a few seconds on the later versions, like 20 and 21, um, and, um, and, then, and then see if that works. If not, always have a backup plan. And that backup plan you've put there, Stuart, is spot on. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Cheers, Matt. Um, <laughs> so then the next stage is actually telling people where to find the JAWS specific key. So again, that, that depends on what layout they're using. It's usually the insert key. Most people I work with have full size keyboards. So if you hold in the insert key, then JAWS knows most of the, yeah, I, I mean, probably 100% of the time that you're looking at executing a JAWS specific command. And just in case you're ever lost in JAWS, um, I always, it's a bit like the home button on you know, an iPhone or the swipe up gesture now on an iPhone. Um, for JAWS, if you press insert with J, it's always going to take you back to the JAWS icon. So if I do that now, JAWS professional. And it's just jumped me straight from Zoom. I had no idea where I was and I'm now back in that in the actual JAWS area. And again, clients can build that base and move as long as they know where they are. That, that's the, the, the key that I try and get through there. So, I mean, this is so basic, it's untrue, but the, the benefits of it, obvious, honestly, is, is immense um, with people. I've not changed the way I've trained people for you know many years now. Um, so then what I do is we, we start getting into more of the nitty gritty with JAWS and I actually make sure that people know their keyboard layout. You have no idea how important that could be if people don't know where certain keys are because the basics of navigating JAWS are you use the arrow keys to you know, get around, you use the space bar um, and the enter key to interact and I activate items. You sometimes use the escape key you know, to, to get out of things. Um, so again, that, that's knowing where those keys are along with the, the insert key is my, my, my next thing. And then what I do is I take people into the, start, the JAWS startup wizard. And I get the amount of trainers that I, I've saw, and I, I, it's not been sight and sound, I, you know, I think it's been other organizations and people, they've no idea what the startup wizard is. And it's a wonderful tool when the first startup JAWS because it allows you to personal, personalize the very basics of actually working with JAWS. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to zoom on because I'm conscious of time. So I make sure I'm on the JAWS uh, window with insert J and then I press Alt H to get into the help menu. Alt H menu, help menu, command section, set plus space, comma, J, Z, leaving menus, JAWS startup wizard dialogue, help us improve freedom scientific products, would you like to participate? And what's in here is you're actually now using those tab keys and your arrow keys and your space bar and your, your enter key to start personalizing JAWS. You're actually navigating and getting to know JAWS better in its own environment. So if I tab around a bit, you're in, you know, it's just dialogue box after dialogue box. And again, as Matt says, you, you might have to explain what a dialogue box is, what a checkbox is, etc. And we do all of this through the JAWS wizard. So if I tab through, Learn more dot, 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 button to act, next create a button to activate press space bar period, Alt plus N. And to activate press space bar. So you're tabbing around and you're pressing the space bar to move on to another screen, another dialogue box. Space, speech settings, read colon 80, left, right, slide. And this is where it gets it because you're now controlling how fast and slow JAWS speaks. So you're actually now personalizing JAWS a bit more to suit your liking. So you're using the arrow keys to, to go up and down the speech rate. 35%, 34%, 33%, 34%, arrow to go back 35%. Up. So again, you're getting the, the use of actually navigating and interacting with JAWS and seeing how it works at the same time. You're learning as you go. Punctuation colon combo box all four or four. Um, usually I keep that the punctuation side I keep to all, but again, I'm just zooming through this quickly, but I think we, we see the point, and, and the typing echo is another big one. You know, again, we, we go through and I show people the different settings for the typing echo in the keyboard wizard, um, just to, so that when I leave them, JAWS is actually working, you know, uh, to, to their requirements, very, very basic, and the very, very basics. Um, so I'll pop out of the keyboard wizard for the moment because there's just one more thing I want to show you. Alt F4, JAWS professional. Now, another key area is getting help within an application. So again, I'm not teaching people Microsoft Word or anything here. I'm teaching JAWS specific help. 
in an application. So if I just jump into Microsoft Word very quickly to give an example. Windows 3, taskbar, document 1 dash Word, document 1. So I'm in Word. If I want help for a specific keystroke for JAWS, I can pre in any application, I can press the, the keystroke for JAWS, insert H. And this will actually give you shortcut keys related to JAWS for a specific application. So in this case, Microsoft Word, if I press insert H. Link set, quick settings, JAWS key plus V, link set, say. So I've made them be quiet because JAWS 2019 is reading the whole thing, but I can just move up and down the list. Link say the line and column of the carrot JAWS key plus delete. Link toggle the writing mode from insert to over type alt plus control plus I. Link say the first cell in the current column insert plus space comma T comma alt plus one. So these are all JAWS specific keystrokes, which any of these you can press enter on to activate it. And then this is where the escape key comes in handy because it gets me out of this help menu. Escape, blank, edit. And you're back in a Word document. But again, what's also very, very um, key that I use is um, a keystroke again in any application, insert W will give you Windows specific based keystrokes. So anybody who is sighted and doesn't have JAWS um, could do any of these keystrokes. So if I press insert W, the following MS Word shortcut keys may be useful. And I'm going to make them be quiet and I'm just going to go down, up and down arrow. These ones are really useful. Create a new document, control plus N. Create a new document, control plus N. Now, how useful is that one? Another one. Open an existing document, control plus O. Control, again, how useful are all of these lovely little keystrokes? And these are Windows based. So, again, at that point, I make the, a, a, the really clear point JAWS keystrokes and Windows keystrokes are completely different. And sighted people can actually use the Windows keystrokes regardless of whether they have a uh, JAWS or, or not. It's just, these are just built in to the operating system. And the final one I show people Escape. Blank. Edit. is a keystroke again for JAWS, which is, it's like a keyboard learn mode. So that keystroke, and you could do this from anywhere. It doesn't need to be in a specific application. You could do this from anywhere within JAWS. Insert with figure one on the keyboard. So it's figure one. It's not F1. It's actually the, the, the key below that, the number one key. Keyboard help on. Keyboard help on. So now if people really are not familiar with their keyboard or they're a wee bit um, you know, antsy about using JAWS, they can press any key and the key, JAWS will actually tell them what they're pressing. So if I give an example. P, L, K, F, 1. So I'm just pressing any key, but the beauty is I can actually try any JAWS command whatsoever in here and it will, JAWS will actually tell me what that command is for. So remember we, we did the insert J1 earlier to get back to the JAWS home icon. Let's do that now within the keyboard help uh, layer. JAWS key plus J brings the JAWS window into the foreground and gives it focus. See how helpful that is? And that really, all of that that I've just described gives people so much confidence for when I next see them and they can actually then really move on to tackle the things that they want to tackle, whether it be Word, Internet, um, email, etc. And I'll just disable uh, keyboard help with insert one again. Keyboard help off. And I'll just come back. I think I'm finished there. So I'll just come back to Zoom and stop sharing Jaws my profession. screen. Meeting controls. Start video left there and all plus me right over. That's brilliant, Stuart. Oh, it's not that Jaws chat chattering away. Yeah, that's so brilliant, easily. Stuart. It's really, really interesting to just see sort of from your point of view, you know, how obviously as a, a blind trainer as well, how you how you would say uh, deliver Jaws training. Because I know that we... We've had a few. I've had a few people contact me prior to the session who um, either work for charities or work for organisations where they would be also uh, delivering either basic JAWS training or more sophisticated. So it's it's great to get your insight and obviously Matt's knowledge as well, um, which he shared with us today. Um, I'm going to start my camera again. I turned it off because just to sort of stabilise my internet connection, but hopefully we're, yeah, we're hopefully okay. It. Yeah, and just, um, again, just could quickly say, Sam, again, any session, so, you know, again, backup notes, I send backup notes after every set, so that everything I just showed you there in that introductory session, I would send to the client in written, easy to understand, written form, so they've got that as backup as well. Brilliant. There's another top tip. Keep keep notes, everyone. Um, good. Now, yeah, Steve, I'm just, I'm, yeah, yeah. 
Steve, I'm aware that you've been waiting patiently with your little virtual hand up uh, to ask a question. So would you like to would you like to join us, Steve? If you still want to ask. You just need to, you just need to unmute yourself, Steve, if you if you still want to ask your question. Alton A. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. I always forget that one. I think. I think it zooms. It's a diet. There might be a wee dialogue box pops up, Steve. That you might need to tap. There might be a an OK yeah. button or an unmute button. I'll tell you what, we'll we'll let Steve jump in if he if he yeah. if he can. Uh, if not, um, sometimes people do just. We quite often get people saying, "Oh, sorry, I, I lent on the keyboard by mistake." Um, so yeah, no problem. Oh no, Steve. I think no, you're still muted. Um, good. All right. Well, let, what we'll do anyway is um, we'll we're going to have to sort of bring things to a close shortly. Um, but I really hope that for those of you that were able to stay, I know some people have to run off and get back to work and whatnot. Um, that you found this session useful. I mean, there's so much to pack into into an hour. We've sort of only scratched the surface, haven't we? With um, yeah, you can talk all day. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, obviously, I'm sure Matt and Stuart won't mind me saying. But if you do need any more information about training, whether it's obviously from you know sort of a, an end user charity's perspective or from the you know access to work, the corporate side, um, you know, or, or, or any other areas of, of of training, then please do get in touch uh, either with myself. And I can put you in touch with Matt and his team, or, or obviously Stuart um, Stuart Beveridge as well. Um, Thomas has said thank you. Uh, informative session, thanks, uh, thanks Thomas. Um, good. A few other notices to mention. Um, so we we're back as always in another two weeks' time. Um, so that will be the thirteenth, uh, correct? Yeah, thirteenth of. May, um, 13th of May already. Um, and we have um, Steve Nutt is joining us from Computer Room Services. Anybody that doesn't know of Steve or, or his company, been around for many, many years. Um, Steve is another uh, assistive tech guru, um, and he is going to be talking to us about a whole range of different devices, accessible mobile phones, um, and beyond um, magnification software, lots of lots of different bits and pieces. Um, do you know Steve, um, Matt? You must know Steve, no? Yeah, yeah, I've known Steve for a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, you know Steve. Yeah, good. And um, yeah, so he's Steve's brilliant, and he's going to come and share his wisdom with us all. Uh, that's in two weeks' time. We've also got some other exciting sessions to come. We're going, me and, and Stuart Beveridge are going to be exploring the new accessibility features on the Sky Q box, aren't we, Stuart? We are. That's the 27 um, of me, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, Sky Q have just released a um, well, a screen reader essentially. Yeah. Um, this new sort of voiceover feature, which reads all of your TV guides and all of your menus, everything to you, which is. I think is brilliant. So, yeah, so we've got that. We've also got guide dogs for the blind. They're joining us um, in June um, and lots more as well to come. So, um, so please do come back for more, more, um, yeah, more, more sort of we've got such a range of sessions to come, um, which is exciting. Um, good. This session and all others, as I mentioned at the start um, is um, that they are put on our YouTube channel straight after the session. So if you if you missed anything um, or if you want to catch up on any of our previous sessions, please do go to the Sight and Sound Technology YouTube channel and you'll find, um, yeah, you, 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 won't, you won't be bored. There's lots to get through on there. So um, good. So yeah, before we, we, we tie up, Matt, thanks so much for giving up your time. I know you're a busy man. No, it's an absolutely pleasure. I want to say it's uh, it's been nice to see it from your side of the coin. So uh, <laughs> it's good. I've just um just for anyone who wants it, I've just popped my uh, my email address into uh, into the chat box, um just in case they have any questions or queries. I know they can get through to you, Sam, but I thought that uh, no. my, my my details are there as well. So please feel free. We're very very approachable. Definitely, yeah. Thank you. No, I appreciate that, Matt. Um, yeah, do do get in touch with with Matt directly if you've got any any training inquiries. Um, obviously, myself and Stuart can help if needed as well. 
Good stuff. Thanks, Stuart. We'll see you in two weeks. Well, I'll see you before, I'm sure, but we'll see yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And thanks again, guys, as, as always. And thanks to, to Matt. And I'll catch you again soon. No worries. Thanks, guys. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, take care, everyone. Stay safe. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. See you later. Thanks, guys.